Okay, this is where it really starts to feel a bit more serious. We're now going to look at some laws of logarithms, these laws of logs that we've got here. And we've got these three main laws that we're going to look at. We're going to look at the addition of two logs, the subtraction of two logs, and the log of something where there's a power contained within it. Now, something to note here is that the logs must have a consistent base. Notice how here they've both got a base A and they end up with a base A. This first law is saying is if there's nothing in front of them, if it's just a single bit here and a single bit here, it doesn't have any number in front of it, then you can say that when you add the two logarithms together, you can combine these inputs, which is the X and the Y, you can combine them into a multiplication. When you are subtracting two logarithms, you can combine these inputs, unsurprisingly, if this is multiplication, by a division. And then this last one that we've got here says that if the input has got something to the power of in it, you can bring that power down from up here. You can bring it and multiply the log by that value, i.e. you can move the power to the front. We've already talked about some of these special cases already. We've already talked about that when the log has the same base and the same input, that it's the power of one. Because we're just saying here, a to the power of what gives me a? Well, it's clearly going to be one. We already talked about this one, that the log of one for any base is always going to be equal to zero. I say for any base, um, the base can't be, why is the base? Well, the base a has to be greater than zero and a can't be equal to one because we'd be saying the log of base one that gives one, which is obviously going to be one. For the log of base, anything else will be that. Um, so, we are now going to have a look at this very last special case again that we're going to explore, is this one where we've got the, the log of 1 over x, log of 1 over x is the same as, 1 over x is the same as x to the minus 1, so you can then pull that power down which is minus 1 according to this law, and you can put it to the front. Now the reason I've done this is because we often try to avoid leaving fractions inside logs. So if we had the answer of log base 2 of a third, we will rewrite it as minus log base 2 of 3. So reciprocating the input, doing the reciprocal of this, negates the overall output that we've got there. But don't worry, all of these things are going to be explored in some questions as well. So if you're finding this all a bit overwhelming here, please don't worry, because we're going to be using them and they're going to make a lot more sense. So I'm going to start off by doing a proof of these three main laws that we've got here, because I think it's really important that you understand where these come from. So here we have got log base a of x plus log base a of y is equal to log base a of x, y. And this works in both directions here. So what I'm going to start off, I'm going to say let log base a of x equal to b and log base a of y be equal to c then x, y is equal to, okay, well, I think we're going to need to start off by rewriting these things that we've got here. So I'm going to rewrite them in my exponential form. So I have got that log base a of x is equal to b. So we're saying that the base is a, the power of a that gives me x is b. Great. And then I've got for the second one, log base A of Y is equal to C. I'm saying that the power of A that gives me C is Y. Uh, what am I saying is Y? I don't know why I wrote that. The power of A, sorry, that gives me Y is C. So now that I've got what X and Y are, I can say that X, Y is going to be A to the power of B multiplied by a to the power of c. I've literally just taken these two things here and I've multiplied them so that I get xy equals a to the power of when you're multiplying things and they've got the same base. Do you remember what you can do with the powers? What you can do with the powers is you can add them together so you get a to the power of b plus c. So I'm now going to take logs of both sides. What that means is I'm going to rewrite this using a logarithm statement. So I'm going to say that the power of A that gives me x, y is b plus c. Let me just say that one more time. So we're saying the power of A, the power of A that gives me x, y is b, c, b plus c. The power of A that gives me x, y is b plus c. So all I'm going to do now is finish off 
by rewriting that b plus c from this information is log base a x plus log base a y. So inherently, it's linked to this idea of multiplication being linked to addition because of the idea with the index laws that the multiplication of two things leads to the addition of the power. So it's going to follow a pretty similar proof for this one that we've got here. I'm going to start off by rewriting these things. So we've got here that the base is a. So we're saying that a to the power of b equals x. We're saying here that a to the power of c equals y. So this time, x divided by y is going to be a to the power of b divided by a to the power of c. So x divided by y is a to the power of b minus c. Now, I can rewrite this using logarithms. I can say that the power of a, the logarithm of a, that gives me x over y is b minus c. Remind yourself what this means. We're saying the power of a that gives me x over y is b minus c. In other words, imagine sort of squeezed in here, we're saying that the a to the power of b minus c equals x over y. And then all I need to do is rewrite what b and c are from earlier on. So that's this information that I've got here. So we get that log of base a of x over y is equal to log base a x minus log base a y. And there it is, what we said to begin with. When you are subtracting two logarithms here, you can combine them together and change it from a subtraction to a division. Let's have a look at this one that we've got here. So this time we're trying to prove that you can pull the power down to the front. So this one's a little bit more simple. We're going to use one of the earlier rules to help us. I want to think, how could I rewrite x to the power of k? k is just a, a constant here. So x to the power of k means that you're just getting x and you're multiplying it by x. And you're doing that, you're doing that k times. So you are multiplying it by itself k times. Now, we know earlier on, we just established this rule that if you have got things being multiplied like this, you can split them into additions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to say that this is log base a of x plus log base a of x plus log base a of x plus, and I'm going to keep doing that, log base a of x. And how many times am I doing this? I am adding k lots of log base a of x. So I'm saying that if I have k of these, I'm going to have k of these. And if you've got k lots of something, you can say that you have got k lots of log base a of x. In other words, log base a of x to the k is equal to k log base a of x. These are going to be, it might be better for you to come back to review these after we've tried it with some numbers as well. People sometimes find these really confusing because of all the letters that there are. So an important note that I wanted to say here is that Sometimes this is a really, really easy, uh, common mistake that a lot of people make. They see this power at the beginning and they just go, great, I can just take that power and I can just bring it down to the front like that. But unfortunately, that's not how this works, because this is not b to the power. This isn't b to the power of k, x to the power of k. This is only b multiplied by x to the power of k. The x to the power of k Sorry, the power of k is only applying to the x part, so we can't pull it down. This one here is wrong. I'm going to show you the way that we should do this one. The way that we would do this one is we would first of all think about splitting this multiplication up. Now, a multiplication can be split up into an addition. And now you can see 
that the power of K is only behaving, is only, um, sorry, not behaving, is only interacting with the X. It is not interacting with the B part. So what it is actually equal to is log base A of B plus, now you can pull that power K down, log base A of X. So it's a bit like bid mass here. The indices, the K is only applying to the X. So we need to make sure that we deal with it separately. So still those laws of bid mass are applying here. We can't pull that K down until it is just applying to that single part of it that we've got there. So this is a tough video, but these laws are really, really important. And we're going to be exploring them with numbers in the next video.